Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about Star Citizen Alpha 2.5 and some of its semi-confirmed features and then maybe some of its dream and maybe features. Uh, so on the 18th of July 2016, Will Leverett posted some of the ridiculously abbreviated features of 2.5. Now obviously some of these might be added to and they might be removed or evolved upon. They are semi-confirmed, so unless there's a blocker, assume that they're going to be in there. The Reliant Claw, or Core, as it's actually correctly called, um, will be flight ready. We already knew that. That's going to be awesome. We'll go on um, for sale as well as soon as that patch is released. Uh, the Argo uh, will also be flight ready. Now, this is a ship that we've seen before in the Morrow Tour. Um, and it's supposed to be like a utility ship for servicing um, Idris and, and larger ships. Uh, they're going to have the cargo and passenger variant uh, flight ready. I assume that's just modules. They are listed as separate ships uh, in that ridiculously abbreviated list. Uh, but I assume, yeah, they're just modules that you'll be able to purchase to swap in and out. So they're going to be uh, on sale as well. Grimhex Pirate Outpost will be released. Now we'll talk more about that in a second. Uh, Landing Zones 2.0. Again, I'll elaborate more on that. And Items uh, 2.0, work in progress. More info to come as it is available. So, some of those features are obvious. The Reliant Core and the Argo, bam. We know we know they're going to be released with the with 2.5. They're going to go on sale as well. The Argo will have a concept sale too at the same time. Grimhex, though. So, that's the player outlaw spawn zone that is for people that don't want to go to Port Olisar. Port Olisar's for more law-abiding people. Um, that that just gives a different zone, that Grimhex zone, for people that, that don't want to spawn in lawful space, basically. Grimhex is a huge station built into an asteroid in the Yella asteroid field. It's similar to the function that Port Olisar provides and will house um, spawn points, um, different shops, items, equipment, and those items and equipment and shops will be different to that of Port Olisar. It's likely to be near some high combat zones PvP-wise. Uh, the station itself is very poorly maintained, like aesthetically. Uh, there are areas which are unused that you have to EVA through, lifts allowing you to get deeper and deeper and deeper into this asteroid too. It is pretty impressive looking and I can't wait to explore it. This will help evolve the reputation system and encourage players to interact uh, with conflict and movement around zones. Expect more missions and different missions based on what side of the line that you fall on. There's going to be a lot more reasons to interact. There's going to be a lot more reasons to travel to Yella and back to Port Olisa. And there's going to be a lot more for us to do gameplay-wise. But also, that reputation system actually having consequences for your actions actually having different spawn points, actually encouraging players to, to, to engage with each other, that is very exciting. Landing Zones 2.0. Now, Disco Lando had to elaborate on this. Landing Zones 2.0 might otherwise be referred to as Landing Pads 2.0, as it has nothing to do with the previously referred to Landing Zones like Arc Corp or Nyx. It's more a continuing refinement of how you approach and land on platforms throughout the Stanton system, like Korea, Cryastro, Port Lassar, and the upcoming Grimhex. I think this is a necessary feature, uh, landing zones or the uh, yeah, landing pads 2.0, let's call it that. Uh, it's a necessary feature for us to be able to land on carriers and stations in the future. So I think they're trying to get that in now. Landing pads 2.0 will hopefully fix a variety of issues with landing, making physics grids less buggy, making physics grids from multiple ships about to interact with each other better, because that's what we're going to need for boarding. That's what we're going to need to be able to land on carriers and stations, um, especially if they're moving, and may even add some new features, uh, not just the back end that we're unaware of at the moment. Uh, a longer range auto land feature, something like that might be really useful if you're trying to land on a carrier or whatever. But even if you're just lazy and want to land on a station, I hope that they'll put that in. Items 2.0. Again, Disco Lando had to elaborate on this. I anticipate this to be mostly under the hood improvements. We're likely to spend uh, some time with our old friend, the use prompt, for a little while longer. So that was referencing the new inner thought system, uh, which will be ready at some point and will be replacing the F to use key that we currently have, which is very exciting. When we actually get that, that will be a lot more fluid uh, and immersive um well at least a different to the use system we have which is a bit intrusive and not not very good um item system 2.0 
is what I think they're referring to as items, but probably more encompassing, um, is basically lots of entities interacting with each other and is the refactor of all the ship components. Um, so coolers, shields, um, power plants, um, and this adds into the pipe system and adds into the plug system how all these components will interact with each other, will feed each other um, energy, power, um, CPU processing stuff, um, give um, heat pipes for getting rid of heat uh, that will go to coolers. All of that stuff together is kind of item system 2.0, but it's mainly the refactor of all those um, items. I'm hoping um, that we'll get most or all of it implemented now because then we can actually see the ship stats more accurately once they have that item system 2.0 in they have all the refactored items in and they have all the they're the good with all the weapons and everything then we can actually start to see the stats on the ships and how they are relative to each other they'll go right now the um, constellation actually will have these turrets it will have these weapons and it will have these systems and that will go throughout all of the ships and then we can see how they actually compare to each other because at the moment we've got a kind of a, a mismatch of some of the newest systems, some on the old system, some on a very old system. The item system 2.0 does represent one of the major like backbones of Star Citizen. And when all of that framework is there, we are going to see huge gameplay um, um, additions, bug fixes, improvements for performance, uh, and lots more coming online very rapidly as soon as that is fully implemented. So some more stuff in general. There's lots of stuff that I'm waiting for. The full implementation of that item system 2.0 uh, port modification and loadouts for fps um kind of gear so uh, that will be first person shooter gadgets grenades better health system but also attachment points on your gear so that you can place um those items on yourself uh, there's likely to be some new weapons in 2.5 both first person shooter weapons and ship ones the frankfurt studio has been working and finished a few recently if you've read the monthly report i'm hoping for the player mounted railgun um that will be amazing if we can start to see that we're going to start to see people doing drive-bys with a player mounted railgun that'd be hilarious uh, but also i want to see more variety in ships weapons and i think we might get some of that in 2.5 um armor and flight suits are likely to slowly get more use and functionality too. I'm hoping again that's going to start to come into 2.5, actually start uh, to, to actually mean something a bit more. Um, everything from the way insurance works to prices and that sort of stuff we'll, might see changes too. And um, we certainly will see little tiny tweaks at the very least. Obviously, it's very likely that your um, Alpha UEC will get wiped again. They will almost certainly do that every patch that they put out. But again, Alpha UEC, that's what it's there for, just for testing. Um, the 2.5 patch isn't likely to be as big um, as 2.4, but it might feel bigger as they're expanding on content, items, clothing, locations, general gameplay. I think another major focus will be a load of improvements to networking and uh, general performance. We're going to start to see Star Citizen attempt to really appeal to other gamers now. From Gamescom to the launch of Star Citizen Squadron 42, I expect to see a lot of gameplay, a lot of improvements to ergonomics in game, making everything a little easier for players to jump into. And that's another important thing they need to get right. They need to get the FPS side and the space combat side working in unison and harmony especially with that for group play so fps players that have yet to join the game are going to want to see that fps working fine now if this is going to be fps centric patch this could lead on to the possible release of star marine now some people may call me mad i mean like star marines canned no it's not canned at all and um, they've always intended to put star marine in there at some point but they the features of Star Marine were kind of slowly rolled into the, the mini PU, uh, effectively, the ones they wanted to test anyway. Um, so it was kind of relevant for them to put it in. But I do think they've made enough progress that we might start to see Star Marine come into its own in the next couple of patches. So if not 2.5, and it probably won't be 2.5, but it could be. Um, 2.6, 2.7, I think we'll see something um, like Arena Commander, but... For, for star marine for, for the fps stuff um so anyway what do you think do you think that was madness what do you think could it be in 2.5 do you think we could get some surprise ships or mechanics even star marine tell me in the comments below i'd love to hear your opinions obviously 
I'll do more informations uh, as soon as we know more, and I'll link some bits and bobs in the description and elaborate and um, expand upon that as we learn more. So check back here if you want to, or don't if you don't. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe because it genuinely does help me. Thank you so much to to all of my Patreons and some lots of random donators recently. That's extremely appreciated. I'll try and email you all at some point because I didn't have any details other than people just sending me money, which is genuinely appreciated. So thank you very much, guys. Uh, you take care. Uh, oh, and also, if you would like to win a Dragonfly, all you've got to do is comment on any of our Star Citizen videos throughout the month of July. And if it's not July anymore, we're going to have a similar veined kind of giveaway for a different ship, most likely. And all you've got to do is comment on any of our Star Citizen content for that given month. Anyway, guys, you take care, and I'll see you in the verse.